Hey, welcome to the Phantom Focus Roundtable. My name is Mike Rodriguez. I'm the host of the Audio Nowcast podcast. And I'm here with Mr. Carl Tatz, studio designer, um, pro monitor and expert, and the inventor of the Phantom Focus system. Carl, how you doing? Good, Michael. It's good to see you again. It's good to see you. Who do we have today on our panel? Uh, well, we have uh, the delightful and, and oftentimes enchanting Warren Hart, uh, multi-platinum producer, songwriter, mixer, and creator of the Tech Award-winning Produce Like a Pro uh, YouTube channel. And um, eventually, this stuff will end up on my website, all these things, and there'll be lots of information to contact. But you can just Google Warren Hart, and you will, H-U-A-R-T, you won't have any problem finding his info. We also have... Um, the, the divine Bobby Osinski, uh, who needs no introduction, uh, but I may as well. Music business writer, having published over 27 books, including a number one bestseller on Amazon, two popular and award-winning blogs, television appearances on CNN and ABC, as a music branding and audio expert, a spot, and has a spot um, as a senior contributor to Forbes magazine, and um, my inner circle podcast and much more um so hi bobby hi carl hi everybody and then monty and anna powell uh, excuse me monty powell and anna wilson who go by mont anna if you will um <laughs> monty is a major award-winning hit songwriter for the top echelon of nashville's biggest country acts and even garnished the golden globe nomination for a song co-written with um uh, Keith Urban for movie Act of Valor. The uh, other half of his successful husband and wife team, artist Anna Wilson, is an award-winning ASCAP songwriter and has performed live with many top artists over the years. Currently, Monty and Anna have released two albums of their self-written, produced, and engineered Troubadour 77 project. They are currently enjoying their third Phantom Focus mix room in their Huntsville, Utah home. So hi everybody. Hi, great to hi, be Carl. here. Hi, Carl. Thank you. Wow, that's some resume there. That is so <laughs> some resume. This is this is this is uh, high powered here. <laughs> hey, well let's say? let's just let's just start talking um, about monitors before we get into the Phantom Focus system, which is a really amazing high end monitoring system. Let's talk about high end monitors in the first place, and and. Let me open it up, and I'm actually going to start with you, Warren. You know, when you jump from that, you know, budget monitor, and I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to compare them like good or bad, but you know, that that monitor that let's say less than a thousand dollars and below, that you know, and you go into the really good monitors, you go into the twenty five hundred dollar monitors, you go into the, you know, let's say fifteen hundred above. What does that extra juice buy you? What is that? What does that get you when you when you make that jump? It's an interesting question. You ask it like that because I get asked all the time about the sort of twelve to fifteen hundred dollar range, which is that sort of because I, I almost feel like in the three hundred dollar range, there's actually a couple of monitors I like that are really amazing bang for the buck. But I have a hard time until you start spending over two thousands liking anything else. There's almost like the di just the difference has become quite negligible. You know, I'm, I'm like, wait until you can actually afford to really take a big leap. But I get asked that all the time about gear, um, whether it be monitors, microphones, you name it. People always think that there's some sideways step you can take. You know, where well, if I, you know, what about a different thousand dollar product? The reality is, is like you do unfortunately have to, as you're pointing out, you have to spend the money to really kind of get a big new to, a noticeable um, difference. And for me, there's lots of re there's lots of things, and they're all quite obvious. Most of them usually power, you know. Quite frankly, you know, I've got a you know it's not a massive mix room, but it's pretty big. I can fit a whole band sitting around here. I can, you know, track a drummer in there and have all the band, you know. DI'd in here and play and still have movement. So I need monitors that have a decent amount of output. And that's why I do have a ridiculously large quantity of monitors. I go from, you know, the big Focal Trio 11s, because if I'm trying to blow the guys and girls sitting on the couch behind me away, I need those kind of monitors. Um, 
and I've been, you know I've used 1032 Genelex since they came out. So, do I think that there's other things? Do our Carl's monitors maybe better? Probably. Um, but the reality is, is like, and I'm sure Carl and everybody understands, I know those like the back of my hand. I know how music sounds like on them, and especially in this room, which I've had for many years. So, yeah, the differences are, are all the obvious things. The more power, greater bandwidth, you know, some of the smaller speakers. And I, I do endorse, you know, uh, you know, technically, I will talk about some of the lower budget stuff. There's a couple of really good products in the, in the sort of $300 range. But you're not going to get extended low end. You're not going to get volume to fill a room. Um, and you're probably going to, you know, you're going to suffer from usually high mid detail is, you know, I don't really start to enjoy speakers until they're about over $2,000 because they, they can't really afford the kind of tweeters, it's you know, whether it be ribbon or AMT or something like that. Yep. Yeah. There's just, there's just kind of logistical things. It's like with all gear, you know, right. it's there's, you know, the price I like points. What, I like what you said. There's no shortcuts. Like when you get to no, that level, no, you, there's no you, shortcuts. Can't, you can't fudge it. But let me ask uh, Monty and, and Anna, um, on a high end, you know, speaker, a high end monitoring system, like how does that contribute to your creativity? What, what does it buy you when you go up to that level or does it create, you know, contribute to your creativity? Well, I mean, yeah, absolutely. There, there, there's a reason. And I think that what you're buying when you make that jump is high mids, almost full stop. It, it, that's where the detail, you know, tends to, to really shine at that, at that moment. Um, and I also think that we're in a really interesting place where, you know, our delivery systems are all compressed and downgraded and, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to have, you know, really high end monitors. And then I think it really makes a lot of sense to have a boom box sitting there as well, or a mono or a tone even which takes me all the way back to my jingle days, you know, uh, Anna really, you know, when, when we work on the, on high end monitors, it's fatigue for her ears that, that usually is the thing that she yeah. appreciates the most. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it, I mean, having, you know, having a high end monitor definitely helps that. And, you know, in the room that Carl has designed for us, um, the way the, there are, you know, obviously the alignment, the phantom focus, all that focal point, all that stuff just makes such a difference um, when you're in that sweet spot, of course, and then when you're sitting back on the couch. So having different monitors that speak to different, you know, experiences too are, are important. I think that's... You know, fatigue is a is a real big thing, and I'm glad you brought that up because you got to enjoy listening to your monitors. I can't tell you how many monitors I've heard where we're like, you go to a studio, they're playing these monitors, and you're like, I could never work in that studio all day long because you're just getting killed. Um, one thing that you hear a lot about is a lot of clarity. Like when you get into those those high level monitors, twenty five hundred dollars and above, you know, you you're starting to get like this clear picture of what you have. For instance, you can hear reverb tails and you can hear your effects and you can hear transients. Bobby, when you, you know, when you work on a high-end monitoring system, how, how important is that, um, that clarity that you get with the monitors? Or is it not important to you and you get other things out of it? Well, Mike, so much has to do with the environment, to be honest with you. Because I think a lot of the problems, what Warren mentioned before about the differences between the the twelve to fifteen hundred dollar range, uh, much of that has to do with uh, the listening environment. And I'm not talking about us so much because we listen in, in pretty good environments. But for the average person who's who's buying monitors, they tend to spend all their money on the monitor and very little on the room. So, as a result, you can't hear the differences so much between, you know, different monitors. So, I think that's the, the one thing that's so important that, you know, you, you really 
take a look at before you invest in monitors. And it's one of the things that I really like about Carl's system, about the Phantom Focus, is because it is all-encompassing for the most part. You you are getting a total package. You're not just getting um, monitors. You're not just getting room treatment. You're, you're getting the total package, and it means so much. I think that's a you know that's a great point. You know, you spend all this money on these monitors, and then you're listening to it. You know, in a, a hard walled room with so much slap back that it just turns into mush so that's a great point especially with the the phantom focus system which is a system which is not just your monitors it's it's a whole system and let's you know let's talk a little bit about the phantom focus system um and let me open it up with uh with you bobby um do you remember the first time you heard a phantom focus system and and what was that about how how did that go Ken Scott and I were doing a kind of a book tour, and we're coming to Nashville. Uh, we're going to go speak at some local Nashville universities, and Carl met us at the airport and said, wait, before you go anywhere, I want you to hear something. And he took us to one of his rooms, and he started to play things that Ken had worked on. And one of the things that I first noticed was the precision of the panning. I mean, you can hear if you're two degrees off, with, you know, the precision that you don't hear in other systems at all. You, you could hear exactly where you were in, in the stereo spread. <laughs> but what ended up happening there's some detail there as well where you begin to hear inside a mix you know it's one thing to hear a mix it's another thing to hear inside of it hear what's going on and i can remember ken uh, listening to uh, we were playing something from super tramp that he had done and ken turned around and smiled and he said that's the first time i ever heard that edit wow that's cool so i think that really speaks a lot for what the phantom focus system is that's amazing hey warren do you remember the first time you heard a phantom focus system i wonder if it was the same room carl it was in nashville no it was this room <laughs> oh it was that room look at that he's he's so well prepared he is so well prepared <laughs> that's a picture of warren I, I had his cameraman go behind the console and i wanted to see his expression the first time he heard it and that's that's what you're looking at yeah. Uh, no, actually, that, that uh, uh, Bobby and Ken were at um, the Blue Grotto. That's what that picture is. And this is at the upper deck. Yeah. My monitor was actually. I think what, uh, I think what Bob, I, I'll reiterate what Bobby's saying. It, it's, and, and what Monty and Anna were saying about the high mid and detail, and that's where all, you, all of your mix lives. You know, because you can, you can get away with going, ah, oh, you know, my speakers don't have quite the low end. And you, you sort of, you know, we, we learn how to mix around it. But you can't do that with mid-range. Uh, you know what I mean? You can't do that with the high mids. And you can't be like, oh, I'm just going to guess what I'm supposed to boost here. No, that, that doesn't work like that. And I think the thing about uh, Carl's system is the detail is ridiculous. And as Bobby said, you can just kind of move around and it's – it's ridiculous um, how much you, you know, how good it sounds in such a wide berth for me was quite remarkable. I mean, I like where my room sounds, but there is one place I have to sit to mix. <laughs> <laughs> well, the room, actually, I mean, that's a good point. There actually is only one place. Um, yeah, but yours is so much wider and sweeter than, than you know, than most most situations because you've done so much work to the room itself that there is you know there's less of the room involved because that's one of the problems it's like right. you've got room in move and you move like this you're like oh everything just changed do you know what i mean there may only be one place to sit but there's only one god position i mean yeah. you know uh, geog uh, geometrics and and uh physics dictate that if you do move you know the frequency response is going to change nobody can do anything about that so there's only, there's a somewhat of a myth of a wider sweet spots. So there's really only one God spot. But I know what you're saying. The, the depth that, that I remember you recall. Sure. 
uh, I remember you're, you're, what you love is the, uh, you love hearing the room sound of the drums. I mean, you live for that. Yeah, the front, the front to back is a big deal. Um, it's interesting because making records through sort of the 90s up until now, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't something that concerned us because we weren't, especially in like early, earlier 90s, we weren't so worried because we weren't playing the loudness wars so much. And, and so, but nowadays with everything being so smashed and up front, you're hoping that your speakers are going to give you as much depth as possible. Because if you, you know, a lot of speakers of the mid nineties that were popular were really, really high mid focused, exceptionally loud in that area. And that was sort of okay because things still kind of did this, but now everything's right. kind of going like that. Yeah. And I listened to a lot of like, you know, speakers and rooms that were designed in that period. And it's kind of unbearable. Mm. I used to, uh, I used to work for uh, Teddy Riley and uh, I was redoing his live rig because I was a keyboard tech back in the day. And, uh, and I remember going into his control room, we were over at future uh, recording studios and I don't know what kind of speakers they were, but he was just blurring them, and he was, it was Michael Jackson Dangerous. He just finished doing that album. Really and, high, a lot of ruthless high end on that record. Oh, yeah. But the thing that I noticed about that whole high, his whole monitoring system was the fact that, for me, that was really the first time I spent a lot of time around a high end monitoring system. And the, the clarity that you get on, on your transients, on the, on the like, the snare hit isn't just a snare hit. It's almost like you can now hear the 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 wood of the the stick hitting the snare drum, and you, and then you can when they go in for a rim shot, you can just hear the rim. And it just there was this unbelievable amount of clarity that I heard, and it was it was pretty uh, pretty amazing. And I hadn't heard that since until the first time I heard a Phantom Focus system over at the upper deck, which was the amazing imaging. And I was like, oh my goodness, the imaging on this, the fact that you could, you could, like you were saying, you can go into the mix. You could just be a part of the mix and just be inside and just like wrapping around you and you could hear your effects. And so it was really kind of life-changing for me because I went home and I hated my monitors ever since. <laughs> but, but let me ask, uh, I want to ask Anna and Monty, you like, can do you remember the first time you heard the Phantom Focus system, and and what were the things that that made you go, oh my gosh, I need to I need to get that. Was it, for me? It was we had two distinctly different responses to it. For me, it was the depth. I mixed a bunch of records in some very very nice rooms. You know, where and, was it? Sorry. Where was the first? Where was the first time you heard it? I don't remember. Was it in your studio? Oh, it was in my studio. Did? Yeah, nope. it was in my studio. Um, it was the front to back depth, uh, the reverb trails, the rooms, uh, the delays that are supposed to be underneath the mix. You know, are suddenly distinguishable. Now I want to change my mix because really that's supposed to be one of those delays you don't perceive, but now I perceive it. Uh, that. So it was, it was a more of a front to back thing for me. And then Anna came in and listened to like, I get chills talking about it right now. That was more vertical. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was like, it was less about the panning and more about how as a vocalist to I'm sort of hyper focused on the vocal right. and you know, communicate and a songwriter communicating the words and like everything is important, obviously, but it's like, in my mind if they can't experience and feel what you're trying to emote vocally you know then you know it, it's not you're not communicating and so the fact that like the voice was sort of above you know and in the front and center and it just you could hear such clarity and such um precision you know especially in that in the God spot, as, yeah, the God. as, as Carl <laughs> mentions. Um, but, you there, know, there I a... knew if you could do it that, you know, hear that there, mm -hmm. that when you moved around the room or you went in your car or you went to lower, you know, hear it on your iPhone and all these other places that people have to hear it. Just to explain, to explain to people watching that the reason for that is, is that 
you know, that we have a curve, a template that we use, and you, you, there are no more, uh, nothing's being masked anymore. You know, there are no more big dips and peaks. It, it's, and it's a curve that uh, reflects the Fletcher Munson thing. So you hear more low end uh, to match the way your ear hears the mid range. You know, flat is bass shy. Uh, in all monitors, it are tuned, tuned flat. You know, yeah. no the purity, the purity that you get alone is just, I mean, if, if you sound, it's just, it's just so important, you know, I, I just love that clarity. So. You know, that, that brings me to a point about the phantom focus system and, re and really, you know, if we're going to be fair, it's about high end monitoring systems in general, but I really noticed it when I was listening to the phantom focus system is that, you know, the emotion that you can hear in your music like it it's it, for me i'm a very emotional you know mixer i'm i very like it has to move me it has to one one direction whether it's party or 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 just you know it just has to move me it just has to speak to my soul and uh and when you can really hear what you're working with it really opens it up to hear to your soul and not all you know frequencies you know, they all come into play at certain times, like a, a bass, a really clean bass underlying, you know, a, a bed of, of strings or something that just that bass coming in could just add so much emotion. You, you, know? have, and, you tell the difference between that bass and another bass. Yeah. You know, and you and see the strings. Right. And also the, um, and then when you go on the high end, like how about how many times have you guys heard vocal tracks that there's this, this, Expose frailty and the vocalist that's just so gorgeous because you just feel like they're just putting it all in there and they're they're just you just hear the emotion and that's the kind of stuff that you really miss on low end monitors heck that's the kind of stuff that ninety percent of people miss when they're monitoring off their iPhone you know but all that emotion and and you know that to me is is something that the phantom focus system really brings. I mean, do you find that, uh, Monty and Anna, do you find that true? That you, that you can hear just much more emotion in your music? Yeah, I mean, the funnest thing Absolutely. in the world to do is to play a mix for an artist who's never heard a phantom focus system. I played a mix for Lyle Lovett. Uh, we cut a, a tribute record with Billy Joel uh, a few years ago. And Lyle came in and covered She's Always a Woman to Me in a very different style than Billy's. I, the whole point was to reinvent in these songs. And, you know, he sat down and listened to it. And, and when it was over with, first of all, there was a pin drop silence. And then he turned around and he was like, This sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and where's the door? Sorry. <laughs> He was like, that's the first time I've ever felt like I could see my vocal cords. Mm. Wow. I that never was heard that story. Yeah. Um, and the first time that I ever played uh, it for Dan, uh, well, the first person I called was Dan Huff uh, when we had our Phantom Focus system. At the time, I was, we were referencing some things, Carl, and one of the things we were listening to was the, the great Jamie Cullum track, um, oh. Yeah, of, of uh, the radio head. Blame, it, blame it on my youth. Yeah, blame it on my youth and, and high and dry and those uh, that record, which was you know fantastic that Al did. And I called Dan Huff up and I just said, "You got to come and hear this right now." And then he Actually, got Al, Al and didn't do that. Uh, Diana Krall, he did Diana Krall. He didn't do that. I don't, I don't know. Al didn't do that. I thought no, he did. Didn't do that no. Well, it's, 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 it's yeah. amazing. He says, "Never heard it sound better. Never heard it sound better." Hmm. <laughs> Well, that you know, that's the thing about about the Phantom Focus system is just the the honest the honesty <laughs> and the emotion, and you know, especially the honesty. Like, oh my gosh, working on a Phantom Focus system when you listen to how the mixes are supposed to be, you know, and that can be good <laughs> or that can be bad too. You know, I remember the first time I I bumped up my monitoring system to a, to a high end monitoring system. Man, the very first thing I realized was. I had so much more to learn. <laughs> I had so much more to learn. Um, but it's, that's what's so cool about working in music. And when you start understanding these concepts and you start understanding, you know, how to mix and, and things like that. Let me ask you, uh, Warren, 
do you find it when you're mixing on a high end system, is it easier to mix or is it more difficult to mix since you can hear everything? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, I mean, I, I think I think it's easier, but I'm reason why I'm taking my time is because I know a lot of people that uh, get freaked out when they when they start hearing things that they're not used to hearing. Um, yeah, and I get a lot of people because I feel like may, maybe Carl won't agree with this, but I, I also feel like a some people in certain genres don't actually want to hear that kind of detail. They just want to hear like fast forward, push to them kind of excitement stuff. Um, especially in like, um, you know, in, in some rock stuff, I've no guys where I'm like, you know, and the reason why I say that is because let's be frank, you know, it seems like half the world still thinks the NS tens were the greatest speakers ever made. And you know, when you've got a seven DB lift at 1.5 K, you know, it's just like, ping, like there's, you know, there's got to be, there's got to be an enjoyment factor of that. You must, you know, so, um, you know, and I did use NS tens. Like I think pretty much everybody, I'm sure we all used NS tens and we probably all stuck up with us on them. And then the general X came out, I think what about 1991 and they were like a breath of fresh air that, you know, like, Oh my God, finally a, a speaker that people like that isn't NS tens in the studio. I remember <laughs> going into studios and having something other than NS tens to listen to. Um, and you know, I still have a soft spot and a memory and a pair in storage, but, um, no, I like uh, going back to, I think, uh, Anna and Monty's thing at the beginning, the high mid stuff. It's the fatigue, the fact that now you can just work for longer periods of time and, and frankly, enjoy what you're doing uh, means that, yes, higher end speakers, you, you can't beat it. But I think it's also sort of a rite of passage, isn't it? When you're younger, maybe you, you sort of want to kind of like, yeah, you want to sort of have the music hitting you in the head and then you get a little older and you like start going, you know what, I want to, you know, I know how to get that sound now. Now I want to sculpt it a bit better. Right. But when you're young, you're just trying to create it. You're just trying to create excitement, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you do those things. You drive things hard. You just, which I still do to a somewhat, obviously, but you know, you, you walk away going, yeah, that was a great mix. Now we all have the skill set to get that, and now we're in that stage. Now we're, you know, I want the detail. That's a good question, Michael. Um, Monty and Anna, you, you can answer this. I mean, generally speaking, one of the attributes of the Phantom Poker system is speed. That pretty much everyone who has it, they work much faster than they used to. Uh, is that was it, is that your experience? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you're not, you're not. You're not fighting or guessing, you know. So, so, Trust. and also the, the 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 sweet spot. You know, I mean, I have so many presets set up because I, I've just already done it so much, mm. you know, that when I when I get whatever the source material is, I've got wired a bunch of stuff pre-wired that is going to get me very very close that I have spent hours and hours and hours on. But when it comes back so true i know i'm now only 10 percent away and it's like i knew it was going to be that block and now it's you know well, so again it, the difference is it's i mean i love ns10s and ns10s and a phantom focus system are amazing uh, i wish everybody could hear it because nothing sounds as up front and it's not the it's not the frequency response it's it's the dynamics of the, those speakers uh, so once you smooth out any, you mentioned the 1.5K, once it's smoothed out to the phantom focus curve, you still have that punch that, that NS10s have. Um, um, but, but again, I think, I think speed is, is one of the big things that uh, everybody seems to, you know, instead of, you know, second guessing yourself over and over again. I mean, once you learn your, your monitors like, like Bobby or, <clears throat> or Warren, you know, you've learned your monitors, so you've got it, but you don't have to go out to the car. You don't have to do this. You know, you, you totally trust what you've got again, because not because I'm a genius or anything. It's just that again, it, it's physics. And, and if you get the, if you, if you get the, the correct curve um, and it's accurate, you're not, nothing's being masked anymore and you're hearing the real thing. And because of that, it travels. Well, Hey, Bobby, let me ask you a question, you know, 
kind of tagging on to what Warren and, and Carl said, when you monitor on a on a high end monitoring system, uh, is it harder or easier? You know, you start hearing these frequencies. I mean, how many mixers like you know in their little home studio have never heard anything below like eighty? <laughs> you know, because they're they're <laughs> working on small speakers. Uh, what what's been your experience, considering you literally wrote the book on? Literally. <laughs> well, one of the things that Warren brought up is important, I think, and that detail can be dangerous. And it's not so much when you're doing it alone, it's if you have people with you when you're mixing and they're hearing things that they didn't hear before. And what could happen is you begin to hear some of the flaws that you let go before so that can make you crazy that that's one of the the production problems that come out of this when when you do have that much detail where you go uh, you know I, I didn't hear that timing mistake before or it didn't sound like it was sticking out like that or oh you know you know it should have used a different snare drum or you know there's so many different things that pop up that all of a sudden you're going uh, you know maybe this isn't ready yet now that could be good or bad so that's what you have to look I at. I remember what, when you were the, at uh, the Blue Grotto with Ken, Ken mentioning I, I had made a point to download and bring over a Blackbird, which he recorded. And uh, I remember him swinging around to you and said, I never realized how out of sync uh, McCartney's vocal double was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's why it was a total failure, you know. You know that you brought up a, you brought up a good point though, like reiterating the whole detail thing. Because sometimes, especially with clients, you know, when you can hear that little rattle that you may not necessarily have heard, and some of that stuff is super cool. So I guess you kind of have to retrain yourself to kind of learn how to listen with the with your options. Because one of the things that a high end monitoring system gives you is it gives you options now, right? Because now you can hear the subtle differences between not only uh, vocal takes, but you can hear between instruments, between synths, between patches. You know, you can hear a hardware synth versus a, you know, a, a plug-in synth and you're like, wow, I, you know, so it's, there's all these options. And I kind of, I kind of equate it to the very first time I did a, a seven, one mix where I had all these extra speakers. <laughs> so you're like, okay, seven, one, let's go, you know, and you kind of have to retrain your workload. So I would imagine with the high end system, you kind of have to retrain it, but you know what? And let me ask Monty and, and Anna, since you work with this, I would imagine you, you have to formulate new rules for you if you're going to work in this brand new system. Um, but I can't imagine it being that difficult because you get into the groove, right? Cause you learn, you learn what to do with all this, this new power, you know, this, this new mixing power that you have. Can you talk us through it about how the workflow, how it was affected when you got your Phantom Focus system? Yeah, I, it, it, we, we have a, a, an interesting dynamic. Dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of dynamic it's amazing range. Amazing that we're still married after producing yes. 25 years together. <laughs> Uh, and, but I, I actually think that this is really, really important because yeah. uh, Anna is the artist and, and she's also, you know, lives where the, where the studios are. So she, she hears the production at every phase. She hears it when it's not well put together. She hears the roughs that I really w weren't ready to play. She hears me doing vocal editing and taking breaths and things that, so she gets to hear a, a, a lot of that. And it's, it, it, it makes for an, an interesting thing. And I, I think it's, she's gotten way more comfortable with the editing that I'm doing again, because of the fatigue and the ability, the ability to sit there and listen for a long time and also the ability to know that this isn't baked. You know, we, we've seen enough baked goods come out of our Phantom Focus system that as an artist, she doesn't have that leap in the net will fall sensation uh, or leap in the net will appear sensation. She, she knows 
that the goodies are coming and all the things that she used to ask for are just a few knob turns away. <laughs> she'll hear them, you know, and, and that, that's actually made really good for our back and forth dynamic because it's artist, producer, producer, artist, songwriter, co-writer, instrumentalist, instrumentalist. I mean, we just, we wear every single hat at, at a different point in time. And it's, it's important to be able to, yeah, you know, go in there at any point in time mm -hmm. and feel like I know where I am in this process so that I'm not always going two steps forward and two steps back. Right. No, I would agree with that. And, and the other thing too is, um, I have just over the years, my, my, as an artist coming in, you know, to listen to a mix when you feel like it's there or really ready for me to at least hear it. Like, I feel like I've gotten this to a place where you should come now and, and, you know, step in and let me know what you think. And, and I do. And, and that's, that's the part. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the part where he's like, I've been working for six and a half hours and you come in and with one listen, you change like 25 things that you hear. And that, she's right because and, she hears them and it makes me so mad. And it's because of Carl's Phantom Focus because it's so good and pristine. And I'm like, do you hear that crossfade? Well, I told you that. And he's like, where? I'm going to represent like, either one of you in court. I just want to say that now. <laughs> okay. He'll go back and it'd be like, oh, damn, that's, that's, yeah, I need to, I need to, I need to adjust that, you know, and then he'll play it back and press all the buttons and, psh, and it'll be great, you know, and, <laughs> and he gets so mad at me sometimes, like, because he's like, ah, you know, and it, and it's right. And it's just because there's such, such good clarity. And that's also, you know, even no matter who you are, humanity, you've been mixing for six hours, sure. you still get yeah. fatigue. It's not yeah. like, you know, you're not going to get fatigue, but just to come in with those fresh ears and be able to hear every, everything so clearly, every flaw, every, like the the t the h to the e of the word the needs a little tuning you know I mean, it's that microscopic and it's just and he's just like yeah it's it's amazing it's a so, really so it's I'm fun and it's very tired most of the time <laughs> <laughs> so cool. well, he'll be like it's midnight come here the mix and we don't go to bed till 3 30 in the morning because <laughs> we've just done three and a half more hours of stuff <laughs> you know what's but you know what's so cool about that story though and and i gotta say is the fact that that the phantom focus system has created this really optimal collaboration environment because you're both hearing what you both need to hear. You know, Monty hears what he needs to hear. You know, Anna needs to hear what she needs to hear. And then you can communicate because you both can hear exactly what you're talking about. So your notes can come through. And, and I can't tell you how important that is because how many times have we worked with a client and you're like, oh, well, we can't do that because this will happen. And they can't hear it, whether it's phase or whether it's volumes or things like that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So fader creep is another thing that the phantom focus has virtually defeated. And, and that such a, has been such a huge thing for like forever, you know, it just doesn't seem to kind of happen because you don't need to constantly d do the guessing or the fight or the, you know, right. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Wow. That's, that's great. What a great, what a great setup. And, and once again, that, the, you know, that picture behind Carl is just, it's just gorgeous. It's just <laughs> gorgeous. I'd we love to work in there eight hours a day. <laughs> Marty, I hope you're- Just put hope those windows on the side, they look right out of the mountains. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, whatever you want, whatever you want, whatever note, whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Well, Check out the doorknob uh, you see next to my head there. It's a, what is that? It's a, it's a elk, a antler. Antler, elk antler. <laughs> elk antler door pole. That's right. That's Both great. great no. Wait, that wasn't an elk that like raided your garden or anything. <laughs> no. No, but, we but could, it could have been. We could harvest one. For sure. <laughs> Not so, that particular one, but. <laughs> Well, hey, listen, we're going to start to, to wind this up. This has been really fun. It's been really uh, informative, too. But 
let me ask you guys, um, and I'm going to ask each and every one of you, if you had uh, a friend, Warren, that was thinking about the Phantom Focus system, what would you tell him to kind of help convince him that that's probably the way to go? Oh, wow. Big question. Um, I mean, it depends on who the friend is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every, every <laughs> single person. Yeah. <laughs> we don't mean every, every single person. It's, it's interesting. I think that, um, see, I was thinking about the, the question you asked me before, and I was thinking about, you know, with the cheaper monitors and the upper, you know, I was thinking about, it's almost like a rite of passage and a necessity and Bobby was touching on this as well, hinting at this, is that it's actually better when you are younger and learning not to have something that you hear every single detail because you'll probably not get any good because you'll spend so much time trying to fix little issues rather than making the big, bold statements that you need to make to actually grow in your trade. So with that in mind, I think that anybody who's been doing this for a period of time that's the person that you're pitching to. Somebody that's got some experience is actually going to appreciate the difference. I mean, that's really the client. So it's some, if somebody comes to me and they're 21 years old and they just started mixing, I'm like, sure, if you've got the budget, why not? But go, go for it. But I think, you know, it's, it's something that you, would, you really will appreciate when you're in there, you've done this, you really and already understand where the fundamental you know, boosts and cuts on most instruments are going to be. And now you want to get into really understanding the detail, you know, like, which has been all the stories. That's a really good point. It reminds me, I remember I had a client and his, he brought his son to town. We had a, a, a dinner meeting and his son, you know, I don't know whether he knew three chords, and he was looking to buy a, uh, you know, a new uh, D45, you know, a $10,000 guitar. And I'm thinking to myself, you don't need a guitar like that. It's, it's, a, it's ridiculous, you know. I'm not sure if that, that correlates with, with the system. No, I, I, yeah, I understand. It's, a, it's sort of a rite of passage, isn't it? I think once you've got an understanding, you're, go, you're going to appreciate the differences. And I, I think well, pretty much anybody, you know, who in, in my circle would – would benefit. What you're saying is uh, every rock mixer deserves to blow out a pair of speakers or two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, back, it, back in the day before you used to put fuses across NS10s and figure that out, I must have blown a good five or ten tweeters. I think if, if you haven't blown out some NS10 tweeters, then you haven't mixed. <laughs> And when they go, man, they go like that, and it's such yep. a horrible sound. Bobby, yep. how about how about you? What would you what would you say to somebody who's on the fence on uh, on a phantom focus? It's difficult to describe something that you can't hear. In other words, I can I can describe something. I, I could tell you all about how great I think it is. Until you hear it, you don't know. So what I'd say is you have to hear it. You just have to. And then you'll be convinced. But it's important that you have a listen because it won't take long to convince you. That's a great answer. That's amazing. Hey, uh, Monty and Anna, how about you? Since you have the system and you've lived with it for so long. Yeah. Three of them, yes, yeah. three of them. It's um, funny we did a video on. on are you trying to give them sign language over here? Um, <laughs> you remember we did a video on the second one, and Monty was saying that you know this is this is my second uh, uh, Phantom Focus mix room by Carl, and uh, hopefully my last, but it wasn't. <laughs> He's wrong about that. Uh, well, I would just say, I mean, we had a really recent experience. I won't make it be too big or long, but. Um, Cause you're talking about the 21 year old and you know, the older sort of more experienced craft, you know, refining your craft. And um, we had a really interesting experience quite recently actually with a, an artist um, named Sammy Brew. He's a wonderful guitar virtuoso, mm -hmm. uh, a phenomenal, he's 20, 20, mm -hmm. 20 or 21. And he is making some of the most profound music mm -hmm. I've heard in a long time in his bedroom on a 
an old yeah on, on logic and, and box a, computer you know playing, and playing just, bass on the acoustic guitar yeah. and pitching it down you uh, know yes. that level of stuff i mean just so rudimentary and just and he's doing the best he can and he brought us these songs you know he said this is kind of what i'm working on and the songs were so good and the vision and the artistry was so good and but it was so m muddy and so just not a pleasurable listening experience, technically speaking. But it was good enough that you could tell that it would be. And Monty just said, you know what? I mean, he didn't have two nickels rubbed together. You know, he's just like, send me, send me the stems, get me the, get me the content, whatever. I want to um, see if I can mix this in my mix room. And he was like, oh my God, I would love if you could just do that. I would be just love to hear it on something that was real, you know? And you did, and he came to the studio and was completely blown away. And the only thing he could think and say was just like, I gotta find a way to make, to get, to get this, in my life, you know, because his, he, he, as the artist, heard his songs and his vision. He's like, I didn't know it was that good. And I'm like, no, that's what we're trying to tell you. Like the bones were, we knew that they were good creatively, but when it was able to be sh shown a light in the right manner and in the right listening room, um, we had a, uh, you know, a fan for life. So uh I think it's the, the work, I um, mean, the, the product that shines forth in the hands of somebody that knows how to wield it um, is undeniable. And I would, I would never use any other system but a phantom focus. Uh, that's amazing. That's a great story. I mean, you can't, yeah. I mean, that's the whole purpose of this whole thing, right? It's like you want to elevate your music and you're elevating this artist's music. And that I think is the whole key would you get to the Phantom Focus system is it just he elevates. he appreciated it. He, the, you know, he heard it even at, you know, he was just like mind blown, you know, and he just walked out of there just with like, now I'm ruined for life. <laughs> He's like, now what am I going to do? That's what we like. How I am I going to get? Yeah, Carl, that, that's the happiest what? Carl has been the whole time. <laughs> I, I know what that's like. <laughs> but that was my experience. I, you, know, you might want to speak to yours very briefly. I recommend it to anyone who can wield it. And I don't recommend it to someone who can't. Well, exactly. Um, and I think that there is an little bit of an above the bar, below the bar thing. Warren started talking about it from the get go. I, I think that there's a place where you wouldn't even know the difference. And it's probably not the difference that you need to be knowing about right now. Right now, you know what you need to do? You need to write a better song. <laughs> and a lot of the rest of the stuff will take care of itself. You need to find out how to be a more charismatic performer. Uh, all of those things before you get off into the weeds of like, you know, this is a mediocre composition. This is an okay singer, but my God, the transients. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, do, I really think that it's an, an important that powerful weapons go into the hands of people who, who can wield it. Yeah. And it's not that I'm not trying to sell things for, for Carl. I mean, I, I, spread the gospel everywhere but there is a place where you're ready to become into sure. this and there's a, a place where you know you need to be dialing your craft in you know what that that brings us full circle that just brings us all around and uh that was amazing well hey listen thank you everybody warren bobby anna monty carl thank you for joining us on this uh our round table. Carl, where can people find information about Carl, Phantom Focus? Carl, CarlTatsDesign.com or PhantomFocus.com, the two, that's the uh, e-commerce site. Uh, incidentally, it just occurred to me that Warren, Bobby, and Monty all have the Phantom Focus e-chair. So that, that's, that's the, uh, the tie-in. Michael, you're, you're lagging there. We're gonna uh. <laughs> Great. Now I'm going to Thanks start so hating. Much, okay. 
I'm going to start hating chairs after I sit in the e-chair. I'm just, I already hate speakers now. Now I'm going to hate chairs. Okay. Thank All you right. so much, guys. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. All right. Thank for you. myself. Thank Bye. you for having us. All right, for myself and all the panel, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time.